Hello, welcome back to my cottage. Today I'm going to be showing you through, if you hadn't guessed already, some of my Beatrix Potter books. Um, I have just picked up a few different ones and I thought we could just have a little look through and look at the pretty illustrations that we've got. Um, so the first one I've picked up is The Tale of Benjamin Bunny. Some of these books are um, gifts from my dad. They were his when he was little. Some of them are maybe from my mum. Some of them I've bought in bookshops, charity shops. Um, some of them John's given me and some friends have given me. So let's have a little look through. They are so pretty. I just, I love Beatrix Potter and I love everything that she did and stands for. Um, and I'm just going to move my tea out of the way so hopefully we can get a focus on these pretty pretty illustrations here we go so this is the tale of Benjamin Bunny I'm just going to flick through a couple of different illustrations and um, not look at the whole of each book but I thought it'd be nice just to have a look at some of them and then if you were thinking of collecting any yourself you might know which ones you might want to get because they look so pretty on a bookshelf aren't they lovely and I love owning these because it's something that we've got that Tabitha can look through as well with us um, and that she can obviously look through on her own as she gets older so there's the Tale of Benjamin Bunny this is gorgeous Goodness, this one's not in colour. There we go, there's a colour illustration. Isn't that pretty? It's just text on that page. Often when you get a plate look like that where you've got um, you know, colour like that, you don't often get text on the next page just because it's printed separately and it's often on separate paper. Whereas when it's something like this, it's often printed together. That's so pretty. I loved Jeremy Fisher when I was growing up. Um, there was a, I think there was like a TV show or something, like a children's one, and Jeremy Fisher was in it. I'm sure that I watched that when I was little. Oh, it's gorgeous. Just so pretty. He also reminds me of my dad. I don't know if that's a compliment or not, but um, yeah, he does. <laughs> I'm sure my dad wouldn't appreciate it on that page. I just think it's such a pretty story and it's just so, yeah, it's just so nice. And if you've ever watched the um, Beatrix Potter movie, a lot of these characters are obviously in that, the one with Renny Zellweger in. Um, oh, this is nice. Sorry, I'm getting distracted opening a book. Um, this was obviously one of my dad's and he's written on the front Andy, he's written his name on the front. As you can see here and then inside I don't know who these people are I have to ask him the name Helen rings a bell but anyway it says Sally Timothy and Helen and it's to my dad so this would have been a gift to him when he was um, little like you know quite young and this is the tale of Timmy Tiptoes and that's sweet I wish people gif gifted books more um, instead of you know toys and games because I think books are invaluable and they are excellent boredom breakers as well that's so sweet oh that's so lovely right the next one we've got the tale of two bad mice and we've also got the tale of Gloucester um, the Tailor of Gloucester, sorry, the tale, the Tailor of Gloucester, which I don't know. There's so many she's written that I actually haven't read. I think that's one of them, um, but it's nice that I've got it. And the Tale of Squirrel Nutkin, of course, I know that one. Let's look at Squirrel Nutkin first because Squirrel Nutkin is an adorable um, book. Aww, and there's little squirrel nutkin. I don't know why but squirrels and things like that always evoke feelings of autumn in me. Um, obviously it's not autumn at the moment as I film this, it's coming into spring. Um, as you will have seen in the garden, it's looking so pretty out there. 
Oh, look, that's so sweet. Let me read a little bit. Let me read a little bit to you. They also took with them an offering of three fat mice as a present for the old brown and put them down upon his doorstep. Then Twinkleberry and the other little squirrels each made a low bow and said politely, Old Mr. Brown, will you favour us with permission to gather nuts upon your island? Isn't that lovely? But Nutkin was excessively impatient. He bobbed up and down like a little red cherry, singing. Riddle me, riddle me, rot to toe, a little wee man in a red coat, a staff in his hand and a stone in his throat. If you tell me this riddle, I'll give you a groat. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Um, and next, let's have a look. Oh, the page has fallen off the front of this, the dust cover. Looks like it was in two parts, so I'll pick that up in a second. So this is the tale of Taylor of Gloucester. I'm not very good at saying that, am I? Dyslexic. But, oh well. Doesn't stop me loving books and loving imagery and art and pictures and things. It just sometimes stops me in my tracks and makes me really focus on what I'm reading. Oh, that's so pretty. I just think Beatrix Potter was so talented in that she spent so much time drawing and creating these gorgeous artworks and turning them into things that we can love and cherish today. Um, and I don't know about you, but I do feel that a lot of the Beatrix Potter books are completely timeless and they're things that will just go on and on to, you know, do well and people will love them for hopefully all of human time. Um, as long as we continue to love and respect nature, I think. That's a big thing, isn't it? Um, and I certainly do. I love to bring the outdoors in with, you know, the decor and I just find nature generally really relaxing. And obviously a lot of people say that. And um, obviously back in Beatrix Potter time, people would have gone away for their health and gone to the country or gone to the seaside. Um, and I think we've almost forgotten about that. A lot of people have anyway, in a way. Um, that being out in nature is actually really good for you um and recently i went up to london and was um diagnosed with an auto i can't ever say it correctly it's an auto like immune problem that i've got and um it basically means that i get really fatigued extremely um exhausted um and my whole body is in like chronic pain not all the time but it sort of comes in leaps and bounds and I struggle sitting in like the same position a lot so when a lot of people have commented on here saying like oh you move a lot with the camera and you need to hold things more steady I actually physically like struggle to do that I shake quite a lot um and struggle like a lot with sitting still and you know, at school being told you're fidgeting and you need to sit still. The whole reason for that was actually keeping my blood going around my body. Otherwise I was likely to faint or, you know, something like that. My oxygen levels in the test that I had were, um, he said, oscillating, which is not a word I particularly like. Anyway, they were going up and down quite a lot. Um, and they were, basically your body doesn't like it when that happens and your body will then go into like a, like a fight or flight mode and, in my um, body, the reaction to that is to try and make me faint, to try and make me lie down, to try and make me like, um, try and make my body like level out a bit. Um, my heart rate and my blood pressure were all over the place. And yeah, my heart rate was going from anything from like 40 all the way up to 120. And that was in the space of a couple of like minutes, even a minute, which is like wild when I think about that. Um, you can hear Boris meowing in the background. He talks a lot, cats talk a lot. Well, my mind you anyway. Um, sorry, totally di digressing from the books onto that. Um, but uh, yeah, it just sort of came up when I was thinking, oh, I'm moving quite a lot and, you know, dyslexic, those sorts of things. Anyway, the last book we're gonna look at is um, The Tale of Two Bad Mice, which is just so lovely. And it says in it, for the little girl who had the doll's house, and I imagine, you know, who that was, I don't know, but clearly it's inspired her to write 
you know, such a gorgeous book. Let me just focus that for you a second there. Isn't this just gorgeous? So John's dad at the moment is actually building Tabitha a doll's house, which I, I love. And this is just inspiring me a lot to maybe do a little bit more art and be a little bit more creative in my everyday life. Obviously I do, you know, sharing these sorts of things and I've got a real passion for decorating. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? But, um, you know, there's the, let's focus you guys again, this camera. Um, there's the desire to, you know, be creative in other, way, other ways. Like, I love pressing flowers. I've got a flower press somewhere. And I was thinking this year to make, um, like, little pressed flowers that I can, like, make garlands of and hang in the windows. And, like, you know, there'll be, like, little rainbow effects. Um, and make more pressed flower pictures. Um, and more... Things like, you know, that being creative with nature, maybe with Tabitha. Um, Boris, you want to come here? He's just meowing in the background. I think he wants to cuddle. Um, but yeah, I was thinking it would be, be fun to be a bit more creative like that. I'm not really that great at, like, art, like this sort of art. Um, hello, come here. Here's my fluffy little boy. You're being so noisy. Did you want to cuddle? Mm. Vermin talk a lot and he's a vermin, don't they? And they just chatter, 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 chatter. We got told when we adopted him, oh and Lily, oh, I miss Lily like so much, but we got told when we adopted them like, you know, you'll always have a shadow and you'll always have someone to talk to if there's no one around the house. And we definitely do, don't we? Don't we, handsome? just so lovely he's quite shy though um with a lot of people he doesn't particularly like oh off you go then he doesn't particularly like being around like big groups of people but neither do i so um i can forgive him for that so we're talking about creativity and um generally i think it's good to try and be creative and find something you enjoy doing that's not um through a screen like computing or photography i think it's good to have something else as well Obviously I love film, I love photography, it's um, a passion, it's my job now and um, it's a very creative medium and I've always maintained the thoughts and the facts that when you are filming or taking photos you're having like a digital painting, um, like you're doing a digital, digital painting because you've got to think about the framing and where things are and how things look. Um, and I've tried explaining that to people that have come to me wanting to start social media and so like Instagram um, and doing something similar to what I do and some of them just don't get it um, which is fine I mean they'll probably be much better at other things than I am but I think it's just good to understand that when you're looking at images online you're seeing a second or a video you know you're seeing a second or two of what someone's done um, but that setup could have taken them hours um, and you know a lot of these people have a real talent I'd like to think I do it's something that I'm good at and John's always saying you know I make it look effortless and when it comes to um writing content like captions and things like that it always comes naturally to me and I just love doing it and John was like you know if he was doing this as a job it would take him hours and hours and maybe days to write some of the captions that I do so yeah I thought that was really nice um for him to say as well but also something for people to be mindful of um when looking at creative content and maybe you know just because you like the look of what someone else is doing it doesn't mean that that's necessarily for you you can enjoy it there's definitely creators that i enjoy watching that do foodie things or um like fashion and that's just not really me i'm not really like excited by those things i love cooking and i love like wearing pretty dresses obviously i'll show you mine But um, yeah, it's just not something that I would, I would never become like a foodie blogger or anything like that. I love what I do, which is like relaxing home aesthetics. And um, that's what I'll probably continue to do. We'll see what, what happens and how things change. But um, yeah, um, anyway, it's been lovely chatting. I hope you liked the brief look at some of my Beatrix Potter books. And I hope you really enjoyed looking around the garden um, this morning and my little relaxing morning at the cottage. Um, it's just how I like to unwind, come downstairs, have a cup of tea, snuggle on the sofa with my big fluffy blanket that you might have seen through the door, um, 
and uh, yeah, spend time before I get uh, my husband and my daughter up. Um, it was lovely to chat to you and I will see you on the next vlog.